hate to bump into you. Um, introduce yourself for our audience. Sure, I'm Ravi Ragbir. I'm the executive director of the New Sanctuary Coalition. I was right here be, uh, at the church behind me, at the Judson Memorial Church, where we have so many people who uh, need help um, come to our churches and who people who want to help also come. I know people personally who are benefiting from your program, and we've actually got a special report on your program mm -hmm. in our show episode that launches today. So it was great to bump into you. What does sanctuary mean to you as you use it in the coalition? Sanctuary means uh, a safe space where people can seek refuge um, from terrible things, right? And in this instance, when they say terrible things, we're talking about the U.S. government, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. But sanctuary for us means a lot more. Sanctuary for us means that we can take it out of the location, into the streets, and into immigration. So we have a program called the Accompaniment where we partner U.S. citizens with immigrants who are in removal, who have to go to court, who have to report to the deportation officer. And that support, that, that having that friendship and that group together means a lot for the person as they go through this process. Partnering is a big piece of the May Day ethic in the sense that it's at the heart of the labor movement. Right. How do you connect May Day and its many multiple international traditions to the movement that you're a part of, and how do you describe it? Well, if you if you look at, if you're talking about immigrants specifically, um, when uh, as immigrants we we all, we're coming in from a different country, but once we're here, we are part of the community. So the same thing that um, U.S. citizens faces is the same thing immigrant faces. So living wage, housing, uh, mass incarceration, uh, prejudice, um, hate hate violence. So we, we face the same sort of um, injustices that everyone else faces, but in addition to that now we have the, the, the fear that if we get caught by um, the country that we, we love, uh, we are going to end up being ripped away from our families. So the intersection is, is as a part of our lives as it is part of everyone's lives. So we, we are e it's easy for us to engage in that, in that intersection that you speak about. And the reason that people get displaced and come here, those are kind of Labor Day, labor May Day reasons too, right? Absolutely. You know, um, you, you talk about economic injustice in the, other, in the other parts of the world where people are actually being displaced because of, um, uh, of factories and businesses coming in there and taking away their livelihood. In addition to the other reasons, which is um, climate, climate change, which is land grabs, which is violence upon them. So there are many reasons that people, people flee to come here and you, you would hope that the United States will be a sanctuary country, which is what is embla emblazoned on our, our Statue of Liberty, right? Give us your tired and your poor, but you know, it, it, only for certain people of certain colors. Does sanctuary work? For example, at the level of New York City declaring itself a sanctuary city, does it work? Is it working? So it will not work if, it only, if you have to depend on the city officials. It only works when we all work on this together. So you, you're looking at my this here, uh, this pin. This is a symbol of sanctuary. It is not our logo. It's a symbol that we, if you see it, it's a safe space. It's a space where you can ask for help. It's, a, it's someone who you can um, ask to, to guide you through the process. I've interviewed some people who have concerns about the whole sanctuary city strategy, the city part of it in the sense that they feel there'll always be a boundary that people fall out of. What I'm hearing from you is something a little different. Can you elaborate on is sanctuary cities, are sanctuary cities something worth aspiring to, working for in your community, even if they aren't everything? So if you are talking about it the way it has been used generally, no, it's very, it absolutely is very limited. And uh, you, we, we, we don't, expect much protection um, in, in those type of um, def definition. But if we look at it broader, so the city, New York City has done well, we're given as a municipal ID. How do people need to use that municipal ID is the question. And you know, we have this, we have this brochure here that shares with people how they can use the tools that the city is providing. We now have to uh, learn how to use it. Um, but in addition to that, you, you, we have to go further and to say that if, if um, immigration comes into our area, 
we no one no one in the city is going to cooperate and that's how you expand the, the, the definition of sanctuary to include the the not only the city officials but includes the church the houses of worship and include the businesses and include our homes and include uh, each and every one of us that want to pro uh, put our bodies on the line to protect someone who is not as fortunate I'm hearing sanctuary as solidarity, which takes us back to May Day again. Final question. I've been thinking a lot about the internationalism at the heart of the original May Day movement, um, that there were no borders, that there were no nation states, that it was a vision going back to the roots of May Day that we could have an, a world that is defined by people and care for the planet and celebrating the red and the green. In these moments, people are so pained by globalism. Their world, their lives, their work has been so negatively affected by something that's been called globalism right. that they're retreating right. to nativism, protection, right. protection, more walls, right. more borders. Right. How do we get beyond that and how can today help? Oh, that's a, that's a really <laughs> deep question. I think we have to look at who is actually the nativist we're speaking about, right? A lot of the country right now is in fear. Uh, and that's the problem. They, they are stuck behind their Twitter account, they're stuck behind their Facebook account. They're not going outside and meeting people and meeting um, uh, others who, are, who will, they will see that there is more than... They, 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 we, we do live in a community and that community does have a certain responsibility to each other and it's not just about me. So the best way to defeat um, nativism as against globalism is understanding that we are all in this planet together. I think everything you just said is as true of the U.S. citizen as the non-U.S. citizen when they walk into your church and go through that process. And I want to thank you for your work. Thank you very much. And I agree. That's why I didn't say immigrants or not. Everyone who comes in is now part of this, this family. And this is where we need to be, family together. And we reuniting families, whether it's our own or it's our extended or just people we meet and building relationships. Thank you for Happy May Day. Happy May Day to you.